Good afternoon. Good evening. Welcome to being here. I'm Ariel. I'm Shia. When is work not? Well, when you do it as though it's your idea, when you do it like you want to, when you don't complain that you have to, let's see. When and else. it's wholehearted. Yeah, all that. You know, uh, I was, earlier today, I drove to the dentist office because yesterday Shai had a dentist appointment and they made a mistake and they overcharged him by, oh, I don't know, about $1,800. And they said that they couldn't just reverse the charges. I had to bring the credit card in. So I went in yesterday before the end of their work day and they had left early. So I came back today and I went there like it was my first preference, my first idea. And I had a flashback to the playground when I was a kid. Jill Wellborn and I used to play spies. It was when uh, Get Smart was on television. <laughs> and I had a pen that was a mechanical pen, you know, which was a really big deal. It had, uh, it was a, not pen, a pencil with right. lead in it. Mine was yellow. Hers was red. We would go out to the playground and stand with a tree between us back to back. And we'd talk into our pen, the racer part of our pen as if we were talking on walkie talkies and we were spies. Mm. And they were laughing. I was telling them, I don't know why I flashed on. I don't recall what had me. Who's the them you were telling? At the, at uh, the, the dentist, dentist, dentist office. And how we had a piece of newspaper from the local Chinese place. And they, it, every day it had different spy uh, messages in Chinese for us. And I realized if I had gone there as if like, you know, you closed early, you told me to come. I got here, you weren't here. I had to come back again. You made a mistake in the first, if I'd gone there with like that attitude. with a burden, I never would have had that sweet, sweet moment. And so whether it's work or your rest of your day, I love that you say it's about going things wholehearted as though your life is your idea. Well, it's about how you go about anything. You know, if you're going to do it, why not do it like you want to rather than you have to? You know, when, when I was a kid, Maxwell, I was like, why were we talking into our our uh, mechanical pencils? And I realized Maxwell Smart used to talk into a shoe phone. He'd take off a shoe and it was like a phone. Oh, it was way, way before cell phones. That's right. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, I went into the weeds and I really like it. And uh, thank you for listening to me. Uh, <laughs> what a treat. What a treat. I think we can take our first guest. I think that would be Shall a good we? idea. Bianca, welcome to being here. Please tell people where you're Zooming in from. Hey, guys. Um, I'm calling in from Menden in Germany. Menden. Yes. How far away from Hamburg is Menden? About four to five hours by car. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. That's so nice. You know, I've been getting more and more of a feel for the travel people make to come to our Hamburg seminars. And I'm so grateful you come. Yes, I'm so looking forward to it. Nice. <laughs> nice. What can we do for you today? Um, I have a question about having fun at work. Okay. <laughs> um, like... Um, I find myself being very serious at work as um, sometimes I think I have another definition of having fun at work than other people. Like for me, fun is, um, or I would say I had fun at work when like the projects um, are smooth, like I um, found good solutions for clients or with colleagues or yeah everything works out well and um, I sometimes blame like not being happy or not having fun uh, at work um, 
when or I, I blame my circumstances for not having fun at work. What if your definition of fun at work is perfect when things go smoothly, when you help clients? And what if there's just room for more possibilities? You're looking to do it differently rather than recognizing that you're having fun is perfect and there are other opportunities that just may not have occurred to you. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Well, you know, you could go to work as though you want to go to work rather than you have to go to work. To be honest, currently, I really do not like my work. <laughs> this is one oh, point. I'm, I'm so, I want to change. That's that. the point, uh, Bianca. Yeah. That you can have a conversation about whether you like it or not. Or you can go there and do it as though you like it rather than indulge in complaining about what you're going to do anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, find another job. But the only problem with finding another job is you won't like that either. Yeah, I will take myself with to that job. Yes, <laughs> that's true. So you'll, you'll just find <laughs> reasons why this isn't it either. Do you also think that because we have the title of this episode of being here, when is work not, it's become a parameter for you to look at and we're having a conversation about. So you talk and you take a look and you go, wow, I'm serious at work, but you're wearing a pair of glasses right now. I am also. So when you look through your glasses, likely it has you see the screen more clearly. It certainly does for me. But if you pretend these are your serious glasses, you're looking through them now and you see how serious you can be at work. But I bet you haven't looked to see that that is universal. You go home and things strike you seriously. Your commute things are serious. How you relate to your family or your mom it's all very serious oh yes you got me <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's true well you could seriously have some fun with your life yeah sometimes i forget how oh don't we all the ladies at the the um dental office it was the beginning of their day and they were getting ready for another day and as I was talking about how I used to play as a kid with these, these mechanical pencils and they got to picture the yellow of my friend and the blue and the, or the hers was red and how we stood. One stopped and said, kids don't play like that anymore. And I'm like, adults don't play like that anymore either. We just forgot. We have that capacity. Yeah. You know, uh, over the next number of months, we're going to be revisiting the different books Shai and I have published. Mm -hmm. Have written. Have written. And published. And produced and published or had, you know, published by McGraw-Hill and whatnot. And there are different steps to producing a book. And one is to go through and look and see where you've made mistakes. Like you say the word, like I'm talking to Bianca. If I say I'm talking to, to Bianca, there's that extra one. But normally when you read it fast with your eyes, your eyes only see what they expect to see. So if I write, I'm, re I'm speaking with Bianca or I'm speaking Bianca, my mind will put in with. Okay. So in the early days... It was not fun to see my mistakes. Later on, as I got more engaged in, I got so excited. I'd give myself a gold star when I found the extra two, two or the missing with. And if I could, I, and it, it's with me today, Bianca, when we work on on newsletters and I find a mistake with my collaborator. I, I found a really good one today. Check this one out. It's very different 
then when it's like mm, this is serious stuff yeah <laughs> this is so me <laughs> yeah it's really has cool. been so you okay yeah talk about those two principles anything you don't like don't want think should be different dominates your life so you've identified that you're so serious at work and you think it's the circumstances and you think that it's a bad thing to be so serious so you won't want to see when you're being serious and you'll just be serious about being serious okay so life shows up exactly as it does this is the second principle bianca can only be as bianca is and each of our listeners can be only as they are and we in can only moment. be as we are in this moment Third principle, anything you see, simply see. It's not see, look out, work on the, <laughs> anything you see. Without judging. Completes itself in an instant. In the instant that you see it, it's over. Now, your mind is normal. You think you've heard things. Now, you have to go away and apply them, seriously apply them tomorrow. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what if it's already over? What if it's done? What if in the seeing that you're serious, you're no longer serious? Boop. Yeah. Sounds easy. See, I'm twisting my pencil, well, pencil now. Uh, Calling Bianca. Our, our address is transformationmadeeasy.com, you know? It is yeah. easy. <laughs> yeah, you chose a, a great name for your website. Well, <laughs> sure, do that, because our original one was difficult if you've listened to any of our podcasts in the early years back when we were part of the internet radio show it was www well we said that back then dot ask like ask a question a s k hyphen that's the dash i n c as incorporated dot com because you can't just say over a radio or over internet or over podcast, ask inkcom and expect people to be able to replicate it. So once we realized it was difficult, then we went up and tried all sorts of different uh, email or, or addresses for our website, many of which were taken. And Shia came up with transformation made easy. I even remember where it was. We were on Route 78. We were in the car. Yes. Having a conversation city. with somebody in it, you know, was, was like, yes, that one works. Let's do it. That represents us. We were, quote, working and it was easy. And it was fun. It was fun. Yeah. That's just reminding me of um, like a time when I really had fun and um, like the projects got easier than before. Yes. Well, you still have that capacity. You just forgot that that room still exists in your house. Yeah. Thank you for reminding me. Cool. You're, You're welcome. welcome. And thanks for being here today. Thank you so much. Hey, it's time for the listener feedback spotlight. It's where we get to hear from people in this amazing listenership and transformation community talking about what's happening in their lives. I, I love uh, attending transformational seminars and listening to podcasts because just it makes me feel really light, really good in my skin and just my problems, quote unquote, just seem to melt away and I'm just comfortable being myself. Do you want to have well-being with consistency? Connect with people all over the world from the comfort of your own home at Aaron and Shire's lively interactive Living Made Easy virtual seminars. Join any of their two-hour online events or take a deep dive into the magic of being you at a virtual weekend seminar. Come on, let's connect. Find out more and register at Transformation Made Easy. Com. We have several Living Made Easy two-hour seminars coming up, Saturdays, Mondays, and one Tuesday a month. You can check out the website and register. Come to any one virtual seminar or come as often as you like. 
We have a virtual weekend seminar upcoming 10 yes. days from now. Transformational Time and Project Management. It's September 28th and 29th. And, you know, we've had this very brief, relatively speaking, conversation with Bianca today. And it could totally transform her ability to handle projects, manage her time, eliminate stress. It's just that easy. You can come and explore with us in the weekend. You're invited. We are going to have fun. Right. Then we have the opportunity. To go to Hamburg, Germany, where we're doing the Freedom to Breathe and the Art of Being Happy. Can you imagine that being happy is an art form? It is an art form. It is. And, and uh, you know, I've gone to rehab for an Achilles uh, heel, tendon. tendon, sorry, Achilles tendon injury. And, you know, the muscles in my legs have gotten so much stronger. You know, you get better at your ability to be happy or experience happiness in your life with practice. I'm, I'm inviting you. We're going to have fun there. Yes. Uh, please join us. Yes. Both of those, you know, mm -hmm. being happy is actually a choice. <laughs> you can either be lost in the complaints of your thoughts mm -hmm. about the circumstances of your life, or you can be in the current moment of your life. If you're in the current moment of your life, happiness is a, mm, what do they call that? Byproduct, side, exactly side that, effect. <laughs> but exactly the word I was looking for, a byproduct of being in the moment. Mm. Anyway, uh, also, join us. Also, January, we are going to Costa Rica. Costa oh, Rica 2025. Yes. Man, if you're listening to this sometime way in the future, for us right now in the archives, whatever Costa Rica we're doing or any course we're doing, uh, they're wonderful. Right. So you can check out all those things at transformation. Made easy. Dot com. Com. Let's take our next guest. Mike, and welcome to being here. Tell people where you are zooming in from. Hello guys, I'm zooming in from Hamburg. Yay! And I'm so Hamburg glad to see in, you. Hamburg in Germany, right? Hamburg, Germany, north of Germany. Hamburg yes. in Pennsylvania. You know, I looked it up. Only a state I, think, away. I think there are 28 Hamburgs in, in the United, United States. States. Really? Yeah, I looked it up because I we were curious. Isn't that fun? That's fun. I had no idea. You know, also probably people you're even related to, they're like, let's move to get a new start. Let's name it the same thing as where we came from. <laughs> <laughs> I actually would like to share something with you and uh, the people listening, um, what I discovered recently. Okay. Um, uh, my mom um, came in a, she needs to be in an elderly living and a care home now. Mm -hmm. And that all went very quickly. There was not much prepa preparation time for my brain to it in a way. So when I got the knowledge that we have a space, I had to go down there the next day and move for the over next day within two days. And it was, um, how would I say it, challenging for me yes. seeing that. And I stayed down there because I had some days off anyway afterwards and started to clear out her flat because it needs to be sold for covering the costs of care. And I stood there alone in this over 100 square meters flat full of a lot of things I've never seen before and thought, what? do I do with all this? Where do I start? And I was totally, I'd say totally hesitating. I have to do it. Not I want to do it. I really have to do it. And it's eating up my actually holidays and all the complaints. And whilst doing it in between, I used these paper towels. Um, where you can clean up some things, you rip them off the roll. And I took one off 
looked at it and it says, enjoy every moment. <laughs> <laughs> and I had to laugh. I really thought, yeah, thanks for the reminder. <laughs> <laughs> It went better afterwards, but I could see myself falling in and out, in and out. And but, but let me ask you something, Mike. And look and tell me the truth. Don't you have this conversation about just about everything you have to do? Yeah, mostly, yeah. Yeah, so, you're in and out, in and out, like you know, it don't, like it don't. Do I want to? Do I not want to? What would I rather do? Yeah, I, I definitely see that I have things I prefer to do. And push other things aside, but I don't prefer really. But even the things you prefer to do, when you actually start doing them, you have the same conversation about whether you want to or not. Yeah. Isn't, that, isn't that fun? I yeah. mean, you don't have to take yourself so seriously. It's like, oh, here that is again. There it is. <laughs> You know, I like tying fishing flies because it's one of the things that I like doing until I sit down to do it. And, that, <laughs> and then if I don't know how to do it, because I only have an idea of what I want and I have to create it and produce it, there's that part of me that wants to go downstairs and have a cup of coffee <laughs> rather than just do it. So maybe that's yeah. normal. I think you are very fortunate that you found the paper towel. Yeah, no, before that. <laughs> <laughs> that's true too. But that you found out that your mom needed to move the following day because you didn't have a week or two weeks or a month to talk to yourself about whether or not you wanted to move her. Mm, yeah. And it is surprising. The second time I went down there to clear out the rest, which I didn't manage to do, it was so different because it was in a way I knew where I'm going to, what's still there. I had a bit time of preparing appointments with real estate and, and uh, like a, a charity thing where I could bring stuff to. Uh, and I saw, ah, it's knowing or being able to know what I'm going to do feels like comfort zone and swimming without safety uh, didn't feel so comfortable the first time. Well, also, you went down to begin with a little bit as a victim. It wasn't, you know, you if, wouldn't, it wasn't your preference to go down there. You even said it. It's eating yeah. in my vacation. Yeah. You know, and then, as Shai said, when he's creating something for the first time, it's more confronting when he sits back down and makes another round of something he's already created. So I'm sure it was easier the second time. But now that you recognize that, that part of the challenge is the unknown part, you know, it was really on you that you took that paper towel, you read the enjoy every moment, and you personally, on purpose, embraced that idea as opposed to, oh, shut the F up. Everybody <laughs> telling me to be in the moment. <laughs> no, you really. You and used it as an excuse. Good for you. Yeah, and, and, and I, finding out that it's this... Um, how do you say it? Uh, the unknown, which frightens me. It's actually cool to see so that I'm recognize it earlier. Well, you know, we've been talking about it quite a bit lately in seminars. We have lots of people have aging parents, for instance, or people are losing jobs or even, you know, school starts again or school ends or, you know, things change change is, is upsetting any change in your routine is upsetting so you walk into the flat your mom has had for years and you realize that's over yeah it's change 
that you could engage and and get to it already it you don't really recognize how monumentally cool that was that you just had that blip in the middle of the living room or whatever room you were standing in as opposed to a full-blown that's it I'm not doing it moment no chance for that <laughs> no <laughs> and it was also touching what I all discovered there I mean her first employment contract uh, from, I don't know, 60 years ago and how she wrote um, to apply for a job in that time, how different that is to today. Yes. And it was like reliving parts of the life of my mom I had no idea from. Yes, she had more courage than you ever knew. Definitely, definitely. I was. Well, maybe, just maybe, you have more courage than you know. Hmm. You know, they say it in the U.S. Uh, the, the apple, apple doesn't, doesn't fall, fall far from the tree. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we have that in Germany too. Yeah. 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 That's sweet. It was. Actually, looking bad, back, not bad, back, uh, and sweet, emotional, challenging, but good time. Mm -hmm. That's great. If, yeah. You know, it's interesting. I know the whole situation was uh, surprising, in challenging, challenging, emotional, at times overwhelming, uh, but Wow. Look, you got it done, babe. And look how you didn't ultimately treat it as work. This was, is your life. I'm just saying it because I really feel that people so underestimate how heroic they are. And you are one of them. Thank you very much. I've not seen it that way, but. And but all I see it also brought my mom and me closer to each other. And I'm actually looking forward. The next step will be that I because that's where she's in a care home is five hours away from Hamburg. Mm. And I want to bring her here to Hamburg. Mm. Find a space here now for her when everything's handled down there. Well, that's Sweet. great. Yeah. Yeah. Sweet. That, that you'll probably both really love that. Yeah, she said she would love it. And we have one actually right across from where we are living. If I can manage that, that's super. Awesome. Easy. I wish you the best on that. Yeah, really. Thank you. Mm. But one last thing, or maybe mm. not last, I don't know. <laughs> um, when you said, when was work not? And you felt like playtime. After I've been there for the first time and I came back to work, I said, I'm so glad just being back to normal work and do what I know and what I like and love. Every minute, every second with my clients was just super. That's <laughs> great. <laughs> and I said, wow, I didn't know that it can be that way, but even without having the back thing with my mom. So it's just brought me energized back for that too. Well, you know, there's the idea that we should appreciate how fortunate we are. But you really uh, have a direct experience. Your mom's ability to invest in, say, work that way is over. And that, wow, you know, you get to, and you have the energy and the passion to still be with your clients and run your business. And it's like, woof. That's there, great. There you go. But I tell you something, I do not think going back to work would have been like that had you complained your way through the clean out because you would have been investing in how unfair it is and there went your, your, 
vacation. vacation and it, I don't like it and I don't want it. And you'd go back to work and you'd bring the I don't want it back to work as well. Yeah. And my son gave me uh, the best uh, gift. Um, it was uh, at that time, uh, it was Mother's Day here in Germany. And my son came down to help me. That's uh, great. And we both had so much fun. Every time, have you seen this? Look at this, what I just found. And <laughs> went out for a nice dinner and just was very, very sweet. That's uh, great. That is so sweet. So it was a three generations thing on one point. <laughs> nice. Really nice. Thank you for sharing that with people, uh, Mike, and it's really a gift. Really? Yeah, because I think a lot of people will have not have to go through it, but yeah, they I'd have experience experienced that on one point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's nicer that way, definitely. Thank you very much for what I've already learned from you and looking very, very much forward to see you in October in Hamburg. Yeah. Great. Awesome. We're looking forward to yeah, it. And I, and I love that you're looking as well as you do right now. Thank you. Yeah. You know, you're welcome. There was a time, it wasn't that far in the past that you were locked in a cycle of complaint. And I just so admire that you kept going till you found your way out. I think I, I, you know. And that doesn't mean that from time to time you don't complain about things. Yeah, it oh. happens to everybody. But I do think sometimes it's so easy to get really in to that a bowl of complaint and can't see the sides and figure out how to get out. And um, I really admire that that you found your way and here well, you the are. courage that it takes yeah. to let go of the complaints and discover your life in the current moment yeah yeah and life is fun yes Ooh, so happy to hear that <laughs> yeah awesome thanks for being with us today thanks you hey you can share this podcast with your friends you know as mike and said uh a lot of people are going through uh, having to take care of people or getting to take care of people, if this is parents age or, or, you know, kids matriculate out to the next level of their life. Um, so if you have anybody in your life, you'd like to share this podcast with, please do. Next week's podcast is going to be, uh, at least rooted in one of the mm, amazing books that we've produced, it's called Practical Enlightenment. Uh, it occurred to us that this was one to do. We were speaking at a Living Made Easy recently, and somebody was talking about how practical this approach is in their life. So we're inviting you. We'll be back next week. So come on back. And don't miss being here. I love hearing you say that. Being here.